Hello and welcome. My name is Lexi Jong and here I like to talk about luxury makeup. Today we're going to be taking a look at the new Dior New Look collection. So this is a limited edition collection based off of the Christian Dior first runway show and the collections titled New Look. They do have a new look eyeshadow palette, but that's not part of this collection. The New Look collection actually is going to be using the eyeshadow palette Tutu. And I have the original Tutu, so not the one with the houndstooth embossing on it, but we're going to go through a look featuring that. And then we're going to come back and we're going to do some swatches of several of the shades that are in the new look collection. So I do have several of the lipsticks that are included in this collection, as well as the new colored lip balm. And we also have some comparisons. So let's first get started with the look and then we'll come back for swatches and comparisons. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to put, apply my base products and I'm using a little bit of the Surat Perfectionist Primer. I have my skincare down so far and here's the primer. Um, I'm going to put the Viseart Eye Primer on. For foundation today, I'm using the Kokendo Moisture Foundation in shade 012. My tube is actually almost, almost gone. I've got maybe two more applications left in here. This is one of my favorite foundations, um, partly because I do have a good color match, but mostly it's the texture and finish of this. I think it is one of the nicest, most natural looking foundations. And I'm gonna use the Kokendo buffing brush for this. This is a synthetic brush. It's very soft. It's fairly dense, not like super dense, but I'd say like medium and it just moves the product really well. I like this brush for other foundations too. It's not something that I only use with Coke and Do. I just think it's a really nice foundation brush. And yeah, you can see it's got this nice, like kind of a domed shape there. And you can see that this particular foundation, it provides, I'd say light to light medium coverage. So I still have a little bit left, but that's going to be it for today. And let's move on. I actually forgot to put on concealer. I usually like to put on my concealer underneath my foundation. So I'm going to go with something light and brightening. This is the Rodeal Peach Low Lighter. So I'm just going to put a little bit here under the eyes and then blend this out. I'm going to use the Esam W23 today. This is actually not my favorite use for this brush. I typically use it for eyeshadow, but I my favorite concealer brushes are dirty at the moment, or rather drying. So overall, I think that did a nice job. I'm going to go in with the Suku powder. This is the Smooth Matte Loose Powder. This is new, and you can see that it is rosy in hue. So I'm just gonna put a little bit into the lid here. You can see it's a soft pink and I'm going to use the Chikahoto, I think this is it, yeah, the T1. It's the big fluffy powder brush. I'm just going to put that on very lightly just to kind of set the foundation. You can see that that really makes a big difference. It gives me this blurred look and it does give a little bit of a rosy appearance. So if you don't want anything pink, don't get this powder. But if you like that kind of rosy glow, yet it's still matte, right? It's kind of interesting. It's like a luminous matte. Um, I think this powder is fantastic. Now for blush, we're gonna go with one of my favorites from Dior. Well, it is my favorite from Dior. This is 361. It's the one with the pretty like, um, flower imprint on it. It's a limited edition, but it's currently still available on the Dior website. And I'm going to use the Refer 24 brush here. And this is a very light, soft blush. So just going to put on a little bit of this. Now this brush or this blush is moderately firm in the pan. It's not going to be powdery or dusty. So I do recommend using a firmer brush for pickup, something like the Undyed Goat Hair. I chose this one because it's also a little bit more dense. 
so it picks up the product very easily and puts it on very easily. Now moving on to Tutu. So the new one for New Look is the exact same palette. It just has the gorgeous houndstooth embossing on it. So since I already had this one, I did not pick it up, but I do, you know, I think if you don't have that, have this one yet, you might want to pick it up in the houndstooth embossing. I think it's really pretty. Uh, so this is 769.22. So we're going to start with the rougher 27 into the top left corner here. You can see there is a little bit of powder kick up on this, nothing major. And I'm going to put this in the crease. Now, my favorite shade in this palette is the Wisteria shade at the bottom left. I think, I mean, for me, that's the whole purpose of this palette. I think it's absolutely stunning. But all of these shades work well together. And even if you don't want to use that, you can get a gorgeous, like more neutral, like kind of like a plummy mauve neutral look with these. So I'm just going to take a dab of the bottom right, just a little bit on the same brush. I'm just dabbing it on my cloth so I don't have too much product. And I'm just going to pounce that softly here in the outer corner. So I'm using very little product because I don't want too much of this. I just want like a hint of the shadow, but you can definitely get this more pigmented and deep very easily. It's a pigmented shade. I'm going to take this crease brush. I wiped it off and I'm just going to drag a little bit of that deeper shade up into the crease, just a touch. Next, I'm taking the Sonia G Builder Pro into the Wisteria shade and just going to apply this here. So I'm just kind of jutting up against the deeper shade here and going to the inner corner. I'm gonna put a little bit more right in the center. So this is a light, more sheer application of this. You can build this up, use your fingers with it. It is uh, much more impactful than what I have, but I'm trying to keep it a little toned down today. Then we're gonna go in to this topper shade here. So this is really more of just a sparkly topper. I'm gonna put this here in the inner corner and brush this over the inner third. you can see that that is like kind of a peachy shade. So it sh changes the tone of the Wisteria. So this is a really kind of muted soft look that you can get with the Tutu palette. I do have a video on the Tutu palette where you can see, you know, other things I've done with this. So I'll leave that linked down below in the description box. Again, this is one of my favorite palettes, particularly for this shade here. Now for the lash line, I'm taking, this is the Byredo. I don't know what this, oh, number 11 brush. And you can see it's just like a flat liner brush. I'm gonna go into the deep purple here and just going to line the upper lash line with this and put what's left on the brush on the lower portion. Just on the outer corner here. And see, I did get a little fallout with that. I probably didn't knock it off the brush enough. So I wiped that brush off and now I'm going to go into the Wisteria to do the rest of the lower lash line here. And I'm just gonna take the Builder Pro and just softly blend those together a little bit. Just kind of dragging that out a touch. All right, so this is it for the eye look. And again, if you want to see more with the Tutu palette, I will leave the video linked down below in the description box. Let's move on to the lips. So the lipsticks in the new look collection are not new, uh, at least the majority of the shades, if not all of them. So I have quite a few of those. I will show you those when we do swatches. But one of the things that is new is this new colored lip balm. So this is the packaging for the new look collection. You can see that you do have a different top. This is going to be seven to eight new rows. So here's the packaging for it. This is really nice. So first of all, it is textured. Like I can feel this. And this is not that plastic material that you get on the traditional Dior cases. You know, it probably is plastic, the actual, but it feels more like, um, 
like a painted metal on the outside. I'm pretty sure it's still technically plastic. It's definitely plastic on the inside, but the coating that they use on here has a little bit more of a painted metallic texture to it. And when I say it's textured, you can actually feel like the, the bumps in the actual like paint on here. It's not like you feel every like hound's tooth print up. It's it's finer than that. So this is it. You've got, you know, this part is common to all Dior lipsticks, it's reminiscent of the Christian Dior belt. And then these new look lipsticks and lip balms all have the hound's tooth print on them. Now this new look collection in general is supposed to be reminiscent of one of the first Christian Dior collections at the first runway show. So let's take a look again. This one is New Rose in 728 and it's a lip balm. And this is the final look. I added the Byredo brow pencil in sand, as well as the Surat Noir lash tint. And this is it. So I have to say this lip balm is more pigmented than I expected. I was pretty sure it was going to have, you know, pigmentation. I just thought it was be, be a little bit lighter than this. This actually builds up to like lipstick quality, <laughs> lipstick level pigmentation. So I think it's a really nice option and I really like the texture of this. So let's go ahead and take a look at some swatches and things. All right, so let's go ahead and start off with swatches and comparisons of the lipsticks. So first I wanted to show you the packaging differences. This is the regular permanent line uh, lipsticks and lip balm cases. You can see that you've got navy blue and a silver belt, whereas this is going to be black and white houndstooth with a black belt. The actual texture of the materials is different. As I mentioned in the uh, look portion of the video, this feels more like painted metal, although I believe it is technically plastic. And both this packaging and this packaging is refillable. So if you absolutely love the houndstooth, packaging, this might be a great opportunity to pick up something in it, even if it's something like the, the clear lip balm, which I have that as well in the, the regular. It's just a clear, like kind of a thin waxy style lip balm. I think it's okay, personally. Like it does not do anything to heal my lips. So, you know, it's just okay. I honestly, I don't use it that much, but these are refillable. So you just pull this out and all of the lipsticks in the permanent line are now refillable as well. So you can buy refills separately. So if you're really interested in the packaging, it might be a good time to invest in something with this packaging. And even if you don't like any of the shades or you have several of them like I do, <laughs> then uh, you know it might be a good opportunity to buy a refill and switch something around. So, this here is the new lip balm, and this is 728 New Rose, and new as an NU. You can see the beautiful embossing on here. So you have the Dior belt in the center with houndstooth embossing all over the lip balm. So we're gonna put this right in the middle. This is one sheer layer of it. And then I'm just going to build it up down here at the bottom. And because this is a lip balm, you can see that sheen, that shine. And it does have a similar texture to the, I mean, it's pretty much the same texture as the clear lip balm, the transparent one. However, to me, this one feels a little bit more emollient than mine. My transparent one's actually a little bit firmer in the tube than this one. This one's a little bit softer, a little bit easier to go on, build up that color if you want to. Now the lipsticks that are included with this packaging and the embossing, they include 100 Nude Look, which they have it in the velvet finish, which is a new finish um, for that shade. I have it in the matte, which is what they had at first. So here is Nude Look Matte. It's gonna be pretty similar in the velvet finish. And then they also have 312 Incandescent, 
in the satin formula, which I do not have that shade. They have 525 Sherry, which is a metallic finish. And that is this one here. Nice. Right, so you can see that this one here is going to be peachy. So nude look is kind of like a nude brown with a touch of peach in it. Whereas Sherry with the metallic finish is more of like a salmon peachy pink kind of shade. Um, so, you know, I'd say it's a warm leaning salmon pink. And then there's also 720 Icon in the velvet finish, which I do not have. 772 Classic in the matte finish, which I don't have. 975 Opera in the velvet finish, which I don't have. And then finally 999 Velvet. And this is one of my absolute favorites. I think if you haven't tried the 999 lipstick in the velvet finish, I would highly recommend it. It's one of my favorite reds. I've tried the 999 in the satin formula and the matte formula and the velvet. And the velvet finish is my favorite. I think this is a gorgeous, it's neutral leaning warm red. It's kind of like one of those tomato reds. It's really beautiful though. And it's one of my absolute favorite reds to wear. I particularly love the velvet finish in this shade. So uh, these are the colors that I have that are part of the collection. Again, there's also the transparent lip balm that will have the embossing, as well as this one here, which is New Rose. Now I do have a video featuring these three lipstick shades from Dior when they were first released in this new formula. And I'll leave that linked down below in the description box if you're interested in seeing more of that. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and move on to the eyeshadows now. So the Tutu eyeshadow palette is part of the permanent line. It looks like this, but you can get it now in the limited edition packaging, which for the eyeshadow palette has like the gorgeous houndstooth embossing all over the actual palette. So let's start by swatching this. These are gonna be your first three shades here. So we have, this is gonna be the top left, top right, and the middle. So you can see you kind of have this mauve toned, taupey nude shade. So it's kind of like taupe that has been mixed with mauve. Um, and it's gonna be a satin finish. Then you have this topper. You can see a little bit of the glitter here. It's actually going to be peach with a touch of rose in it. So it's kind of like a peachy glitter shade. And then this middle shade, I have to say, this is the one that I use the least in this palette. This is really more of a mauve shade that leans war warmer. So a typical mauve to me is usually going to have a little bit more a little bit more of that bluish purple tint to it, whereas this is gonna lean a little bit warmer than that. It has a little bit more of the rosy shade in there. And then the bottom two shades, these are my two favorite shades in the palette. You know, my three favorite would include the topper, but these bottom two here are just awesome. So we've got this Wisteria shade and you can see it's really blue with a touch of purple in there. You know, it almost looks purple, but it's really more blue than purple. But you can see that it's satin, almost as, it's like a satin metallic. So satin with a touch of metallic to it. And then we have this matte, really deep blue base purple here. And I just think it is stunning. It's like a blue violet kind of shade. So this is the Quint. I absolutely love this Quint. It is one of my all-time favorites from Dior so far. Let's do some comparisons with this Quint. The first palette I want to compare this to is actually from La Bouche Rouge. I believe this is called the Mead palette, but I will have to double check that. So this has four shades. These are all satin and they are not going to be like an exact match or anything like that, but I think some of the vibes of the colors. It's reminiscent. Aside from that Wisteria Blue, I feel like the shades in this are pretty comparable to, you know, this like upper third portion here. So you're just kind of missing these cooler tones from the bottom too. 
So in my opinion, out of what I have, I think this La Bouche Rouge palette, if you don't care about that with Syria Blue, with, which for me, you know, I think it's like a travesty because that's the best shade. But I think that that is um, the most similar thing that I have to the rest of the shades. This is the Suku 109 palette. And these shades, again, they're not going to match, but they do have a few similarities in the color story. So you have a topper, you can see that this is gonna be a cooler, more like bluish gray topper. And you have this purpley shade, it's gonna be more lavender than the Wisteria. And then you also have kind of this warmer rusty shade, which is warmer than the shades in the Dior palette. But again, you still have kind of a similar color story. And the last shade here doesn't really match those, but you can see again that you can get a similar vibe. This one's also Suku, this is 110 and I'm just going to actually do the purple one here so well we'll just put it down here so here's the purple from this this purple is almost a mix between the wisteria and the matte let me mix those for you and put them next to it so here they are mixed and you can see that they are going to be cooler and like more blue based in the Dior so maybe not quite as similar as I thought. Maybe if you add a little bit more of the matte shade. Let's try that. So if we put a little bit more of the matte on top there. Yeah, it's a little closer, but it's still not quite as cool. And the, Su the Suku palette's a little bit warmer. The Dior is a little bit cooler. And then I have a few Dior palettes I wanted to take a look at. This is 639 Blooming Bouquet. This was limited edition, so it's no longer available. The majority of these shades, they don't go at all. So we're just going to look at this deepest shade here. We'll put that right here. And you can see the difference between them. This is going to be a warmer tone. It's also not quite as deep. So the one in Blooming Bouquet, you can see actually as it kind of spreads out that you've got more of those like rosy tones to it in the undertones. This one here is 749 Romantic Voyage. So again, these top two shades here aren't really gonna go, but let's take a look at these bottom three. So these are the three on the bottom, and we're gonna put this one here. Oh, that's a little too light. That's similar, different, but on the eyes, it would probably be pretty similar, especially if you mix those two. And this looks like a deeper version of the middle shade in 2-2. And then this last one, it's actually not very similar to 2-2, but when these quints originally came out, this is the one that online, you know, looked more similar. This is Plum Tool. This is one of the permanent ones. Let's see here, we will put this, well, actually, let's go ahead and we'll just squeeze it in here. So we've got the first shade here. This is the second shade. So those don't go anywhere. And then this third shade, I'm gonna squeeze it in down here just because it's more similar to those. You can see that that purple shade is going to be different from the Wisteria, but it's closer. It, it has a different finish though. It's more of a softer satin. It doesn't have any of that like metallic look to it. And then these last two shades here, this, the fifth shade is more of like a violet, like a red violet. And then the second to last, let's squeeze that in right here in between these. And you can see it's a gorgeous shade on its own, but it doesn't, doesn't quite go. It's kind of like if, if you mix these two, you're going to get a similar vibe to the Wisteria, but still not quite there. None of them are quite as blue toned as those, the one in Tutu. So I hope this was helpful so you can get an idea of what the New Look Collection entails. I think the packaging on the New Look Collection is stunning. I really love it. I'm very happy that I picked up this colored lip balm in New Rose because I love the way it feels on my lips. Again, it's a little bit of a softer formulation than the transparent one that I have. And I like the fact that the it's pigmented, you know, it, it really, you can have it sheer. You can also build it up more to what I have on. I mean, this looks like a lipstick. 
and it has that gorgeous sheen to it. So I really very happy with that. Tutu again is one of my favorite Dior palettes, one of my favorite palettes of all in general. And I think it's a great color story. So if you already have it, don't be fooled by the gorgeous new packaging. You know, it is the same palette, but uh, if you don't have it, this might be an opportunity to pick it up in the gorgeous packaging. Regardless, if you are a houndstooth fan, which I personally am, um, then I would definitely recommend picking up one of the lipsticks or lip balms. Again, these are the shades that I have from the collection. We have 100 Nude Look. We have 525 Cherie. This is the lip balm in 728 New Rose and 999 Velvet. If you don't have 999 Velvet, I would definitely recommend trying that. But again, that's the shade that Dior comes out with in all of their limited edition packaging. It's like their, their iconic shade. So, you know, if you, you might already have it in something else, or you might want to hold off on that and get something a little different like the new Rosewood or new Rose. So hopefully this was helpful. I'd love to know what your thoughts are on this collection. And I will see you very soon. So have a great day and stay safe and healthy.